I began to notice a change in my body. I felt myself becoming very fatigued, extremely tired, and that's not how I am. So uh, my mother would, at, at different times, ask me if I was okay because she would notice and see that I was uh, more tired than usual. And um, one day, I started noticing my eyes getting darker and darker with like a yellowish, brownish type color. And uh, my son said, Mama, what is wrong with your eyes? On this particular day, it looked like someone had gotten a yellow highlighter and just colored my eyes. And it was at that point I called my primary care physician and he told me to stop what I was doing and get over there to, to the doctor's office. Well, he, he checked me out and everything and come to find out I was diagnosed with jaundice. And he told me that I had bowel backing up in my bloodstream. So there was nothing he could do for me. And he referred me out. So I had to have an endoscopic procedure where they would go in to see what was going on. And um, I had two of those procedures from this one particular doctor. And he said that he could see something, but it wasn't clear enough. So he referred me out. And that's how I ended up here in Baptist. Uh, Ms. Stafford had what's called cancer of the ampulla vater. That's a small opening uh, in our intestines where juices from our pancreas and our liver empty. In lay terms, we would consider this a cousin of pancreas cancer. And pancreas cancer can be a very aggressive cancer. Cancers of the ampulla vater can be very aggressive cancers too. And it's someone as young as she is, that's a, that's a tough uh, diagnosis to, to hear and to uh, move forward with. The issue with having a rare types of cancer that are not very frequent in population is that they're every bit as um, problematic and dangerous or life-threatening. But we don't have a great many cases. We don't have a big studies to know what is the best way to treat them. And this is an example where you need your team effort to come up with the best solution in order to achieve the best possible outcome for your patients. The risk factors for bowel duct cancers, they're not very well understood, but we know that certainly obesity, hepatitis, uh, smoking, um, some genetic predisposition uh, can play a role. So lifestyle is at the forefront as a risk factor in this um, area of our country in terms of the risk factor for bile duct cancer. Some of the symptoms, well, the most obvious would be if your skin and, and eyes turn yellow, you, you will notice a darker urine or changes in the color of your stool. Sometimes the first symptom could be just feeling very itchy skin, you know, scratching. What we decided to do with Ms. Stafford is think outside the box, again, as a team and we had this very preliminary information that perhaps giving chemotherapy and radiation first might be beneficial in terms of eradicating any tumor cells floating around in her bloodstream and also perhaps more importantly kill as much of the cancer that she had already before we operated on her. When we took her cancer out and we analyzed it pathologically under the microscope almost the entirety of her cancer had already been destroyed before she even had surgery. So we were very encouraged with those results. I mean, the doctors here have been great. I couldn't have asked for a better uh, team of doctors. Uh, Dr. Beerman is just, with his level of expertise, um, you know, I prayed about it because I am a Christian and I'm a praying woman. And I was standing on my faith. And with his uh, level of expertise, everything was just wonderful. Even receiving that diagnosis, just to know that that was a blessing within itself because it was caught at an early stage. For anyone who's going through this, um, battling with cancer, I would say stay encouraged. Keep the faith. It's going to be all right.